Okay, happy Thursday. You know what's funny? I noticed I've gotten stuck in a routine. When I do the Tuesday update, I go, hey, it's Tuesday. When I do Thursday, I go, happy Thursday. But um, it is what it is, right? Okay, um, the thought for today came out of a, a scripture that I came across that revealed something to me that I hadn't seen before, which I love. Um, wrestling with new things. I don't want to go to Scripture to prove what I already believe. I want to go to Scripture and have it say something to me that challenges something, a belief, a value that I've held. Because if I don't do that, then Scripture becomes a case law book just to prove me right and you wrong rather than something to speak into my life and to teach me how to live differently. So I came across, across one passage that has really challenged me and I'm going to throw out to you um, today. But let me start off with kind of a little bit of an introduction that's going to sound political, but it's only going to be sound, it's only going to sound political because we've allowed words to be politicized and then they lose their ability to be a descript, ways to describe uh, things. You, you'll understand in a bit. And these two words are freedom and liberty. <laughs> now, when I throw the words out there, because of your political persuasion, because of, of the way that you lean philosophically, you're going to attribute meaning to those words. Well, freedom means this. Liberty means that. Um, and, and we may not be able to do a really accurate job other than having this emotional feeling reaction to it to, to actually describe what does freedom mean. If I were to ask you to describe freedom, you kind of kind of stumble around probably a civil understanding of libertinar libertarianism. And, and that is to be able to do what I do without harming someone else. If I want to do this and it's okay, it, this conversation came around masks, it's come around vaccinations, it comes around speed limit laws, it comes, you know, there's a whole lot of things that are wrapped up in freedom. I honestly believe that liberty is even a more difficult word to describe. That if we were pressed, what does liberty mean to you? We would kind of hedge a little bit. We, we would look it up in the in the dictionary, but we wouldn't have a really good operating, thoughtful understanding of what those mean. Um, and unfortunately, those words have become so politicized that even if they're mentioned in scripture, we can't think of a scriptural way to relate to those words. When Jesus says that I have come to set you free, we, we kind of will throw in an understanding of sin, but we really don't know what that means. And so when I came across this verse, it really challenged my cultural, civil understanding of freedom and liberty and, and made me wrestle with, do I consider freedom and liberty more in a societal way than I do a scriptural way? So let me read the verse, talk about it a bit, and then kind of challenge you with the same thing I'm being challenged with, and that is kind of redefining what those means, what those mean. It comes from Acts 28, which is the last um, chapter in the book of Acts. Acts was writ written by Luke. Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke, which is this highly organized um, understanding of the life of Jesus. It, it's organized in a way that there's a pattern to Luke. And then what Luke did was use that same pattern in describing the growth of the church after the resurrection of Jesus. Um, and, and they're really nice parallel. They fit real well against each other. Um, and in the early parts of Acts, he talks about the explosion of the church, and then he introduces us to a person named Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament. And at the end of Acts, Paul is under house arrest. He's in Rome. Uh, he's in a home that he'll never, ever leave again. This is the final place that he'll be. He traveled all over the Mediterranean starting churches, but once he's under house arrest, this is the end of his life. It's the worst of COVID. You're, you're homebound. Um, he's restrained. Shelter in place. He can't go anywhere or do anything. Worse than an ankle monitor. But this is how Luke describes Paul under house arrest, not allowed to leave in his work. Verse 30 of Acts chapter 28. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all those who came to see him. Boldly, and get this, without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not how we would describe without hindrance. In fact, and this is going to be political also, 
during COVID and during the shutdown, there were a lot of churches that complained that they were being, um, having their freedom taken away. They were having their liberty taken away. That their understanding of those terms and concepts of liberty and freedom was bound by how they were defined civilly rather than scripturally. And so there's a lot of conversation around that. But this verse, I think, challenges us to re-examine. Can we set the idea of freedom and can we set the idea of liberty back out on the table and go like, what does this verse have to say about that? Am I bound by a cultural understanding of freedom and liberty? Or am, am I going to let scripture speak into how I understand that as far as being hindered is concerned? Because I know that there were churches and, and religious organizations that felt like they were being hindered. And here is Paul confined to his house, never ever to leave it again, and Luke says that he was unhindered. There is a contradiction there that we have to resolve. And so, the two things in, in closing. The first one is, in your understanding of your relationship to the society as a whole, to culture, to, to civil understanding of how we live, how do you define freedom? And how do you define liberty? And what is being hindered looks look like because we know what the scripture has to say about it and then I want you in your own life what does it look like to have freedom in your own life what does it look like to have liberty in your own life and what is being hindered to you me personally like what is a barrier to you what is standing in your way what what are the things that you allow into your life that keep you from being who you feel like you're supposed to be do you allow external controls to decide that or, or are you like Nelson Mandela that said, prison is only a state of mind, it is not a physical thing. And so, I'm wrestling with that. I'm going to try to figure out what it looks like. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing. I have got to rethink my understanding of what it means to be free and what it means to be hindered. Because I know Luke described Paul as being unhindered. Even though he was under house arrest. So, have fun with that. Um, Sunday, we will have a really cool worship service where we kind of pivot between a personal understanding of what it means to live a thriving, flourishing life to starting in June to what does that look like as a community of faith, as a church, with a lot of personal, practical implications coming from that. Um, we've got a big Fourth of July picnic coming up. Um, watch for that. We've got the gathering next Wednesday night. Watch for that. So there's a lot going on. Please follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, download the app. Check out our website. Share it with a friend. Make sure that you help other people get plugged into what's, what's going on here. Um, that's it. Uh, stay cool. It's going to be hot for the next long while. And we hope you have a great week weekend. See you Sunday. And take care. <laughs>